Hey everyone, welcome in. This video is all about how to get to Montmorency Falls from the Old Town area of Quebec City where the cruise port is. We're gonna talk about a few different ways of going there, the different options that you've got, the one that I took, and why I possibly messed up. Okay, so Montmorency Falls is located eight miles or 12 kilometers north of where the cruise ships come in, and you've got a few different ways of going there. So if you've never been to Old Town Quebec before, I definitely recommend checking out the Old Town, the cobblestone streets, the beautiful alleyways, the architecture, the museums, an amazing place. But this is also a great option if you're looking for something different because you've been here before. And that was kind of the approach that I was taking. So to set the table here of the ideas of the ways if you can possibly go, Lots of cruise lines offer shore excursions to Montmorency Falls. There's also some local tour companies that run some shuttles from the old town out there and back that you can organize in advance. You can also take a public bus too, which is the X800, which we'll touch on a little bit towards the back end of the video. Or you can take the option that I took, which was to take an Uber there. A little bit more expensive than taking the public bus, but a lot more time efficient. Now, I said at the start, I might have messed this up a little bit and I'll explain it as we do go through, but let's take a look at the journey. The morning started by arriving at the base of the beautiful UNESCO World Heritage listed Old Town of Quebec City. After making my way through the jetway into the terminal building, down the escalator, and past the local visitor information services, I was out the front of the building. After walking a couple of blocks away from the cruise terminal, it was time to organize my transport by requesting an Uber ride. With plenty of Uber drivers around the Old Town area, it was easy to get a ride, and the cost for the 8 mile or 12 kilometer journey was to be $25.20 Canadian, the equivalent of $18.45 US at the time of this recording. Within a couple of minutes, the driver was here and we were off on our journey. The scenic drive north along the St. Lawrence River took less than 15 minutes and I was at our destination, the Clifftop entrance of Montmorency Falls. So I'm here, I made it out of the Uber, it was about 20, 15, 20 minutes each way, uh, 25 Canadian dollars. The thing about it though is it's just so, so windy, so uh, let's see how we go. After purchasing an admission ticket for $8.70 Canadian dollars, I walked straight up ahead towards Montmorency Manor, a 1994 reconstruction in the style of the original 1780 manor that was destroyed by a fire. Normally there is a pathway running right in front of the manor, however, as you can see here, construction work was taking place at the time of my trip, so visitors to the falls were being redirected along a pathway behind the manor, along a nice flat pathway leading up to the large stone pillars indicating the start of the boardwalk that crosses over the top of the falls. Once here, you can take in the incredible views looking out over the St. Lawrence River across to the island of Orleans connected by the Orleans Island Bridge. From the boardwalk, you can take in the initial start of the falls and then also look out right over the top as the water crashes down 83 meters or 272 feet into the basin below. The various lookout points allow you to take in this incredible act of nature from all different angles. Once across the walk bridge and scenic viewing platforms, you can either head back in the direction of the manor, which is near where the cable car platform is, or you can continue further along through the park area on the far side. The nature trail continues along with more views overlooking the cliff face which is where you can see a set of stairs appearing in the distance along the far cliff area. So the goal is to walk down the side here. So there's a little sort of cliffside boardwalk there. Yeah, you can take a cable car and go down, but we're gonna be a little bit adventurous and try to walk down the side of this cliff here. After continuing along the pathway in the direction to the top of the staircase, upon arrival, you are greeted by this beautiful view of the falls in their entirety. So it's pretty amazing out here. We have this waterfall. It's been backlit beautifully by the sun. And then there's also been a rainbow, so you can't really go wrong there.
Now whilst you have the option of taking the cable car or zip lining at the height of the summer season, I decided to head down the 487 steps to take in the falls from all different angles. Once at the bottom you just follow the path along the water, around to the viewing platforms and then to the visitor center at the base of the cable car. So, so far so good right? We got out there in about 15-20 minutes, nice time efficient Uber ride out there, 25 Canadian dollars. So all things good, we saw the waterfall, we got over the beautiful bridge there, took in the views, took in the steps, fantastic. Then came around the bottom, got down to the visitor center at the bottom where the cable car comes down and that's where the problem started to arise. So once I got to the visitor center, I tried calling an Uber to get a ride back, but there were absolutely zero drivers anywhere nearby. And after trying for around 20 minutes, I just gave up. Also, there were no taxis nearby either. After then inquiring from the visitor center about the public bus, they told me it only leaves from right back up near the top entrance of the site. So this left me with a choice. I could either climb the 487 steps all the way back up or pay for the cable car. Now, as I was too stubborn to fork over the money, back I went all the way up the stairs, through the nature trails, along the walk bridge and back to the manor. It was at this point after speaking to the staff there that the public bus I found out was Canadian cash only and I only had cards with me, no cash. And of course there was no ATM there to use either. Now luckily, as I was walking back to the entrance gate, someone was actually getting dropped off at the site in an Uber, so I was able to manage to request that driver to give me a ride back to the old town. It was a very lucky, very fortunate turn of events that helped me then get back to the port in time for the ships all aboard. So the good news is I did make it back obviously to tell the tale of what not to do and what possibly to do to really make the most of this experience and make sure you kind of take in the great travel experience that it is but do it in a relatively stress-free way. So would I recommend taking the Uber out there and back? Probably not because it doesn't always work out that well as you can see there. Easy to get a ride there, not so easy to come back. So something you may wish to consider if you do want the most cost efficient way of doing it, the public bus. The reason I chose not to take the bus is because of my work schedule around the time I don't have the whole time in port to be able to just maximize it and take the time there. Because the thing with the bus, it costs as of the time of recording this video, $3.75 Canadian each way on the bus, but it makes lots of different stops along the way. So it takes a 15 minute drive to about an hour each way. And it doesn't drop right at the front door too, it drops further north from the visitor entrance point up across the street from a McDonald's and then you've got to walk back down. So there's a few things to factor in there though. I was looking at time efficiency. If you don't wish to take an organized tour, which honestly is probably the best way because it guarantees transport, you get guided information and the safety and security of actually making it back to the ship. Even though it's only eight miles or 12 kilometers away, transport becomes a little bit tricky up there. That's a great option, but if you're looking for others, I'd perhaps look into a couple of the other alternatives such as the local shuttle companies that run from the old town, do round trips that you can find online to book. The other thing is, I talked about taking an Uber, you can just take a regular taxi. There are some taxis at the cruise port that you can take and organize a round trip in advance. That might be a better option for you. Or if you're adventurous and you want to take the time, the public bus might be the best one. So that's my thoughts on it. Amazing place to visit. That being said, maybe relying on Ubers might not be your best bet. Now, if you've been out there before and you've got some other tips and tricks, leave them down in the comments below. If you've got any other questions that you think I can help with, just let me know. More than happy to help, but otherwise enjoy your trip out to Montmorency Falls.